outside Fat Tulip's house, there was a little street. And at the bottom of the little street, there was a great big main road. And going along the big main road, there was a great big green bus. The bus was completely full. There were passengers sitting in all the seats, and there were loads of people standing as well. Suddenly, one of the passengers started to itch. And then the one next to him started to itch. And then the one next to her started to itch as well. Somebody was using itching powder. And then one of the passengers started to sneeze. And then another of the passengers started to sneeze. And then another of the passengers... Somebody was using sneezing powder. And then the conductor said, Whoa, what's that terrible pong? And all the passengers said, Oh, whoa, it's disgusting. Somebody was using stink bombs. And the conductor said, Itching powder, sneezing powder, stink bombs. You know what this means? And all the passengers said, Yes, we know what this means. Fred the Bad is back in town. <laughs> the little voice said, Yes, I am. All the passengers turned round to see where the voice was coming from. And there, on the front seat, was this tiny spindly little man with little spindly purple legs, little spindly purple arms, a little purple body, little purple face with a great big purple beaky nose, and lots of black hair sprouting out all over his head. I'm Fred the Baddie, he said. I've escaped from prison and I'm coming back to town to see my best friend. I've sent him a message to tell him I'm coming. Mm -hmm. Who do you think Fred the Baddie's best friend could be? Fat Tulip was in the kitchen. And suddenly, he heard the postman coming up the path. Oh, he's got something for me, he said. It's probably a late Christmas present, or an early birthday present, or a Valentine's Day card, or, or a Mother's Day card. Suddenly, he heard the thunk of something coming through the letterbox. <laughs> I'm going to go and see what it is, said Fat Tulip. <laughs> oh, no! It was a kipper with a stamp on it. I know what that means, said Fat Tulip. It means Fred the Baddie wants to come and stay. I can't stand Fred the Baddie. He wants to be my best friend, but I get into trouble every time he gets anywhere near me. I know what I'll do. I'll pretend that I'm out. And he got some paper and he wrote up a big notice that said, Fat Tulip has gone away. And he pinned it up on his front door. Now, he said, I've got to make absolutely sure that Fred the Baddie doesn't want to come in here. So, he made some incredibly pongy stinking mixture. He got all the disgusting, revolting, pongy things that you can possibly think of, and he put them in a bowl. Oh, and he stirred them all up. And then he tipped them into a load of cups and jars and buckets. And then he stuck them all over the kitchen. Ooh, ooh, he said, that'll stop Fred the baddie. And then he went upstairs and hid under his bed. Fred the baddie marched up to Fat Tulip's door. He saw the notice, pulled it off and ate it. I can't read, he said, but I expect that notice said, Welcome to Fred the Baddie from his best friend, Fat Tulip. But it didn't, did it? Fred the Baddie opened the door and went inside. Cool, what's that lovely smell, he said, as he smelt Fat Tulip's stinky mixture. Oh, look! Fat Tulip's left out a drink for me. Oh, that's really nice of him. And one after another, he drank all the little cups and all the little jars of stinky mixture. Oh, lovely, he said. And then he opened the kitchen door to go upstairs. But crash! An enormous bucket of stinky mixture, which Fat Tulip had left on top of the door, fell down on Fred the Baddie's head. And went all over his face and his shoulders and his arms. <laughs> said Fred the Baddie. What well, a good joke! Now that is what I call really funny. <laughs>
Meanwhile, upstairs, Fat Tulip heard the crash of the bucket and at the same moment, he saw Inspector Challoner, the local policeman, coming up the garden path. Do, 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 do. He's here, Fat Tulip shouted. Inspector Challoner, Fred the Bad is here. He's downstairs in the kitchen. Ah, oh, great, Squire, said Inspector Challoner. Fred the Bad is just the person I'm looking for. Inspector Challoner burst into the kitchen, but Fred the Baddie had disappeared. They looked all through the house, they looked in the garden, but they couldn't find him anywhere. Perhaps he was in the orchard. Down in the orchard, all the washing was hanging out on the washing line, and Fred the Baddie was pulling things off and trying them on. Inspector Challoner called out, Is there anybody there? And a voice from the other side of the washing line said, Yes, but I'm no one special. Inspector Challoner burst through the clothesline and saw Fred the Baddie disguised as a little old lady. Good morning, madam, said the inspector. What are you doing? And Fred the Baddie said... Good morning. I'm a little old lady and I'm going to market to buy myself a pig. I'm going to call the pig Humphrey and it'll be my friend for the rest of my life. Thank you, madam, said the inspector, and rushed back to the other side of the washing line. There, on the other side, was Fat Tulip. Was that Fred the Baddie? said Fat Tulip. And the inspector said, no, it was a little old lady who was going to go to market to buy a pig called Humphrey. But, inspector, said Fat Tulip, we haven't got a market. That wasn't a little old lady. That must have been Fred the Baddie. <gasps> they rushed through to the other side of the washing line again. But Fred the Baddie had disappeared. Inspector, said Fat Tulip, he must have jumped over the garden wall. Don't worry, said the inspector, I'll jump after him. And the inspector jumped over the garden wall into the next garden. And there, ahead of him, he saw a little old lady. He hurtled up to her, he grabbed her around the knees, and he said, Fred the Baddie, I arrest you in the name of the law. And the little old lady said, Leave me alone! I am an innocent little old lady! Go away before I call the police! And then Inspector Challoner saw another little old lady and he rushed towards her. And then another one, and 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 another one. Go arrest you all in the name of the law, said Inspector Challoner. Leave us alone, said the little old ladies. We are innocent little old ladies and we're having a nice afternoon playing bingo in this garden. And they started hitting him over the head with their handbags and their bunches of dried flowers and their loaves of homemade bread. Inspector Challoner sat on the grass and burst into tears. Soon, the little old ladies had finished their game of bingo and they went indoors to raffle a cake. All except one little old lady who seemed to feel sorry for the inspector. Hello, she said. You upset? Mm. Said the inspector. Do you like a drink? Mm. Said the inspector. Nice cup of tea? Said the little old lady. Please. Said the inspector. Here you are then. No, said the inspector. That's not a nice cup of tea at all. That is horrible, stinky mixture. Yes, said the little old lady. Funny joke, isn't it? I'm not a little old lady at all. I'm Fred the Baddie. And I'm tired now. And I want to go home to my cell. Will you take me? And Inspector Chandler wiped his eyes, blew his nose, <laughs> put the handcuffs on Fred the Baddie thanked Fat Tulip very much for his help and drove Fred the Baddie doo -doo 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 back to prison. Phew! Fat Tulip sat down exhausted. Thank heavens I've got rid of Fred the Baddie, he said. Phew, at least I won't see him again in a hurry. That evening, Fred the Baddie was sitting in his nice, warm, comfortable cell playing draughts with Inspector Challoner. You know, said Fred the Baddy, I've really enjoyed today, thanks to my friend Fat Tulip. Next time I escape from prison, I'm going to go and see him again. <laughs>